laws in this way, fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, and complete what is lacking in your obedience to it. Because mm -hmm. again, all have sinned and come short of the, the glory of God. Verse 3 in, in Matthew, the seventh chapter, says this. Why do you stare from without? Yeah, at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but do not become aware of and consider the beam of timber that is in your own eye. Law and have mercy, we ain't got no problem pointing out a little fault of somebody else, but we uh, totally ignore that big thing, that big fault that's going on with us. Why? Because it's easy for me to look at you as opposed to looking at myself and pointing out your faults. I don't want to point out my faults because in my eyes, I, I'm all good. I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not. The word of God says there's no one good but God himself. So why do you want to call yourself good? Lord have mercy. How can you say to your brother, let me get the tiny particle out of your eye when there is the beam of timber in your own eye? Yeah, we quick to want to go and go help somebody. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to straighten you out. You all messed up. I need to get you corrected. Correct your own self. And how do you do that? Look into the word of God. Do like David did when David was confronted with his own sin. He sat down and realized when the prophet Naaman brought it, brought it to his attention that, that he had really messed up. He gave him a parable. That, uh, you know the story of David and Bathsheba. Uh, he ended an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. And then he uh, uh, did a conspiracy uh, uh, to, uh, to cause, a, well, literally murder uh, of, of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite, while he was in battle. Yeah, uh, the prophet Naaman came to him on, on the behest of God and spoke to uh, David in a parable and told him about a man that had a prize you and that you was uh, a, some, another man uh, took possession of it and, and took it. And, 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 and it was not his to take, but he took it anyhow. And so David said that that man, that man should be killed. The one that took the prize you, he should be killed. The prophet Naaman said, it's you, king. David sat down and he read, and, 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 and by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he came up with the 51st Psalm. And maybe I better read a little bit of that to your hearing so you understand what it means uh, to when you judge somebody. Look at your own self first. And if you have a heart uh, after God's own heart like King David did, then maybe you might do something like this. David said, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and guilt and cleanse me and make me wholly pure from my sin. For I am conscious of my transgression and I acknowledge that my sin is ever before me. Yeah, many of us go into a state of denial about what we've done because we don't want to be seen in a, in a, in a negative light. But as I told you. God sees everything, and don't you know that that which is brought, that which is hidden in the dark, will be made manifest in the light? Why? Because the light is shining upon it. That's why Jesus Christ is the light. Just in case you didn't know, uh huh. Get against you and you only have our sin and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and faultless in your judgment. That's right. Whatever we do, be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. You're gonna reap what you sown. Mm hmm. Get ready, get ready, get ready for your butt whooping. Behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity. My mother was sinful who conceived me. And I, and, and, and I too am sinful. That's acknowledging where he came from, y'all. We were born into sin after first Adam uh, uh, and, and, and Eve uh, 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 brought sin into the world for us. By uh, uh, disobeying God and eating the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. Make, yeah, purify me with, no, no, where am I? Yeah, verse 6. Behold, you desire truth in the inner being. Make me, therefore, to know wisdom in my inmost heart. That's right. He deserves, God desires truth from within. Because too many of us don't have no, no problem trying to speak truth out of our mouth. But that ain't necessarily the truth that comes forth out of our mouth. A lot of us don't have no problem with, 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 with telling a lie uh -huh, about the truth. But but God looks into the, the place where he can determine whether or not truth exists. He looks into your heart. Why? Because the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful and wicked in all his ways. Who can know that thing? That's, that's Jeremiah 17, 9, y'all. But I, the Lord, search the heart 
and, and I will I will deal with you, and I will uh, deal with you according to the deeds that proceed out of your heart. I just paraphrase that, but that just lets you know that God is is the, is the only righteous judge because He knows how to judge us, y'all. We don't know how to judge one another. Not to condemnation, we don't. We don't have that right anyhow. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean ceremony. Wash me, and I shall in reality be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt and iniquities. Now watch verse 10, y'all. <clears throat> Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right preserving and steadfast spirit within me. Yeah, we, there needs to be a clean heart. David recognized his heart was a mess. Many of us don't want to admit to our heart being a mess. As a matter of fact, we try to, oh my God, we try to profane God in a worse way by saying some stupid nonsense like this. God knows my heart. When you've done something wrong, something that you know is wrong, and, and, and you and, and you want to just... Uh, 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 try to make it out like, well, you know what? I really, I didn't mean to do it. I don't know why I did it. God knows my heart. Don't you know that what we do proceeds from what from within? What defiles a man is from within a man. Not that what comes, not from the out of, uh, not oh my God, not that's outward that anything outward that defiles him is what's within him. And what is within us is within our heart. That thing that we hold near and dear. Those things that we are. Uh, that, that, oh my God, that we cling to. Yeah, that's the heart of man. It's deceitful and wicked in all his ways. Lord have mercy. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Make me hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. I think I've read enough of, 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 of Psalm 51 for you to get the understanding of what you need to do. Amen. As, as opposed to sitting around there trying to judge somebody else to condemnation, acknowledge your own fault and then have God deal with that on your behalf. But you have to do something first. Uh-huh. A contrite heart a God will not despise. Amen. You need to have godly sorrow. Oh, my God. You hypocrite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already read that. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, uh, how can you? Yeah, I can, yeah, you hypocrite. Yeah, or how, verse 5, y'all, in Matthew, Matthew 7. You hypocrite, first get the beam of timber out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy to the sacred thing. Oh, now we're going to pass on there. I'm going to go back to Romans, the second chapter. Amen. Amen. So we want to get into the righteous judge. We want to get into the righteous judge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, where was I? Did I, where did I, did I read verse 2? I think I read verse 2 or 4. Let me see, Arthur. Well, I'm going to start from the beginning. Amen. Therefore, you have no excuse of defense or justification, O man, whoever you are who judges and condemns another. For imposing as judge and planting sentence on another, you condemn yourself. That's more or less what we were just talking about from Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we're talking about condemn. Yeah. Uh, because you who are who you who judge are habitually practicing the very same things that you censor and denounce. Now it says habitually practicing. Guess what it's saying right there? You're a sinner. You're a sinner because if you habitually practice that which you're judging uh, somebody else for, you're judging them for their sins. Then you're a sinner. Habitually practicing that would be well. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, all things old are passed away. All things have become new. Uh, apparently, that is not the case uh, for this here person here that we're talking about in Romans, the second chapter, in the first verse. Amen. Because habitually practicing the very same thing that you censor and denounce, that makes you a sinner. It makes you no better than them. But 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 that, and that's why that you should not try to judge or condemn someone to condemnation. But we know that the judgment adverse verdict sentence of God falls justly. Why? Because he's a just God. He's a holy God. And in accordance with truth upon those who practice such things. Amen. Because it, it has to be uh, in accordance with truth. Because if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, then guess what? This is what the word of God says. He is the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes through the Father unless you come through him. You're walking in. If you're living with Jesus Christ, you are walking in the truth. Amen. 
And, 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 and how, do that, how does that truth manifest itself within us by way of the Holy Ghost? Because if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Well, the Holy Ghost will direct your path to all truths and righteousness. Amen. He will not lead you astray. Oh, my God. Here we go. Or are you so blind? Oh, no. And you do. Oh, yeah. Let's do verse three. Yeah. And do you think or imagine, oh, man, when you judge and condemn those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape God's judgment? And elude his sentence and adverse verdict? No, you will not. We already told you what, that, what God says about our heart. In that verse 10, it says, uh, when he says that who, uh, the, the, the heart of man is deceitful and wicked, who can know that thing? Paraphrase, y'all. Verse 10 says, but I, the Lord, search the heart, and I will reward you according to the deeds that proceed from your heart. You cannot escape. None of us can escape the judgment of God that is to come upon us. He will not allow that to happen. Especially when you judge and condemn those who practice such things and yet do them yourself. <laughs> Be you not deceived. God is not mocked. You're going to reap what you sow. And yet some people think that they can, they, they can camouflage of themselves in such a way that God don't notice what they're doing. Are you kidding me? He's omniscient. He knows all things. And there ain't enough camouflaging you can do to escape him. You don't believe me? Ask Adam and Eve. Lord have mercy. In the Garden of Eden, when they bit into that fruit, their eyes were open and they realized they were both naked and ashamed. Why did they realize they were both naked and ashamed? Well, prior to then, they were operating in what is known as the period of dispensation of innocence. And what does that mean? It simply means that at the time that God created man and then subsequently uh, did a split in, in, that, in, in that creation and brought forth the, ma the female to, to have a, a, a two separate beings, male, male and female, man and woman, they knew no sin. That's why God told them, do not eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Man knew no evil. Evil was present within him. He didn't know he had it. And he did what he did not also know is that he had the ability to make a choice between right and wrong, good and evil. Until he bit into the fruit. And then when he bit into the fruit, immediately the first thing that Eve and Adam did was fashion fig leaves to cover up their private parts. Because now as they looked upon themselves, they found themselves ashamed. Previously, in, 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 in a verse uh, 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 in, in Genesis 2:24 and 25, this is what the Word of God says: "Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh." And they were both naked and not ashamed. They had no problem looking at one another, and none of that craziness that goes on within that libido of ours. Uh, when we look at uh, uh, one, another, one another in our nakedness was happening with them. But once they bit into the fruit, oh my goodness, shall we say it? Yeah, all hell broke loose. Next thing you know, uh, uh, temperatures started rising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, temperatures started rising. And not only did the temperatures rise, but oh my God, you get the picture. Yeah, and then so they tried to cover themselves up. And that wasn't good enough. Then they tried to hide themselves in the bushes. And then God, presence of God, came forth in the garden and says, Adam, Adam, wherefore art thou? Uh-huh. And guess what? Did you hear him say Eve? Now, they both had messed up. But Adam was the one that God gave overseer rights to watch over the garden. Adam had responsibility for every living creature in the garden, including his wife. So God called him as the head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's sometimes when we don't want to be the head. Ain't that right, men? But, yeah, God got a way of getting you. Yeah, I'm the head. I'm the head. Well, be the head and be responsible for your actions. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here we go. Here we go. So he said, well, what? Adam, wait a minute. Uh, 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 who told you you were naked? And did you eat from the tree of the knowledge? From the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And what did Adam say? Well, that woman you gave me. Then Eve, woman, what did you? What happened here? What did you do? The, the serpent, he beguiled me. Both of them, both of them, defrayed responsibility and accountability to somebody else. Adam, blame God and the woman. The woman, 
was said she was tricked by the devil. Lord have mercy.